All right, guys, what's up? Undead Youth here, um, bringing you guys a video. Today's video is going to be a discussion on the current healing meta in Warlords of Draenor. Uh, the reason why I'm making this video is primarily for newer players, like the reason why I make all of my other videos, but uh, players that are just now tackling raid healing for the first time, uh, which is obviously a change from five mans. Uh, the way that I wanted to construct this video was just to give you a breakdown of how healers work because very often I look and I see on forums and videos and just in chat, um, specifically in Cancer LFR, like the one that you're seeing off to the left, which, spoiler, we don't kill Archimonde. I just kept going until all of my gear broke, uh, but I just decided to put something there. Uh, but anyway, um, the reason why I'm making this video is because I very often see people who compare other healers incorrectly. They'll say, oh, Disc is better, Holy is terrible, don't ever bring a Holy Priest. Or they'll say things like, Monks are useless, or this, that, and the other. And oftentimes they'll cite healing meters as the reason for that. And they'll slap fancy words on it like throughput, and they still are very uninformed about what they're talking about. Uh, what I really want to get across, if you take nothing else away from this video and the analogy that I'll make later, is that number one, when you're comparing healers, never, ever, ever use healing meters to do so. That the reason being is because for different classes, they judge different things, right? For a, it's really easy to say, like if you look at a healing meter and say, oh, a disc had amazing throughput on this fight, clearly they're the best healer and we should stack four of them. That doesn't make sense, right? Anybody that's ever played WoW ever will know that that's incorrect. Like, you just can't do that. The reason being is because of the weakened soul debuff, which basically means you can't have more than two people powered shielding the raid at a time. It just doesn't work. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's a very radical example of people using healing meters incorrectly to judge what they should be doing with their healers. But it's an example that is, in my opinion, it's just as stupid to hear people say things like, well, holy is bad because in this fight, the discipline priest had more throughput. When what you're not understanding, simple things that you need to take into account are the dynamicism between the other classes. So, for instance, the having a discipline priest in your raid affects how other players heal, affects how much they overheal, and affects their overall perceived throughput on a healing meter because of it. But, for instance, for a discipline priest and a paladin, whenever you see a healing meter, it's not judging necessarily the exact same thing for, sorry, that's my dog, uh, for a paladin or a disc priest as it is for a holy priest or a monk. When you look at a, a healing meter for your absorb classes, what it's actually showing you is how much damage that they've absorbed, right? Which means how much damage they have prevented the raid from taking which is great, right? That's what we need. But essentially, that's not healing, right? That's not going to necessarily save anyone's life. That is just reduced damage. That's the same thing as judging a tank's effectiveness by how much they can reduce their overall damage, which is not necessarily the best thing about a tank. So the same thing can be said for healers. So when you see a Discipline Priest, not only when you look at their healing bar, are you looking at an entire mechanic that some classes don't even have, right? Druids and monks who don't have absorbs outside of life cocoon. So again, judging two very different things there. And then you're also looking at their odd uh, healing output spells. They're, they're spells that actually do have throughput like penance or flash heal or for a paladin they have a few more throughput heals but primarily it's through their illuminated healing. Uh, and you're looking at all these things in addition to absorbs which other classes don't even have. So it's not quite fair to compare healers in that regard simply on their throughput via a healing meter. Uh, and there's a lot of other things that go into it, like the type of damage, the type of fight, how frequent the damage is, again, what other classes you brought to the raid, and like things like mobility in the fight. All of these things matter a ton, and they don't get enough of a look in. But any healer will tell you that before you judge anything, you need to talk about all these existential circumstances before you get down to what healer is best in the fight. So with all that being said, the analogy that I'm going to throw at you guys today for healing is if you're really new to raid healing, you don't really know how it all kind of fits together, which until you get it, you're not going to be successful at your class or really at healing in general. 
so you need to know how it all fits together and the best way i can describe it is think of damage as a tidal wave and your group or a player depending on who you're focused on healing is your city right tidal wave rar city right you see the tidal wave coming you know it's going to happen. You know it's eventually going to hit your city. You can't pick up your city and move it away. It's going to hit your city eventually. Your healers are responsible for dealing with the damage or the fallout in different stages, right? So we see the tidal wave coming. What's your first line of defense? Any sort of, a, uh, you know, a shore city or a coastal city will be built to actually withstand waves of certain strengths, right? So you have things like levees, you have things like dams, and all this other cool stuff. Like, I don't actually know because I'm not a fucking architect, but you have environmental counters to waves, and you have things that are man-made that are meant to counter things like that. Those, so for instance, we'll call them barriers for the purpose of our example. Those are your first line of defense. You're not going to put anyone outside of the barriers to try to hold back the wave. The barriers are the first line of defense against the wave and they're meant to take the brunt of the actual full force of the hit right and then whatever water slips by other people will deal with it but the barriers are inanimate objects that are meant to be stalwart and try to absorb the brunt of the hit as much as possible those are your absorb classes those are your discipline priests and your uh holy paladins if you guys don't know what absorbs do, I wish you could see my dog, he's like in my lap now. Uh, but if you guys don't know what absorbs do, let's just use a very, very arbitrary example where I say I have a player with 100k HP. Let's say he's our tank. Your tank should have more than 100k HP. But for this example, he doesn't. And I place a 20k power word shield, which is nothing but an absorb. All that is is effective health or effectively additional health on that target. It just adds onto their health bar. So now they effectively have 120k health. So let's say they are then hit by a boss for 25k. That 20k absorb is eaten through and 5k of their actual health is taken away. So they leave that hit with 95k HP. As opposed to if they didn't have the 20k absorb on them, then they leave that hit with 75k HP, right? So obviously one, example A, is better than example B. Not only that, it's really, really hard to actually show the extended health bars that absorbs leave on players in ray frames. So what the group actually appears to see is just that people are taking less damage. So what your other healers and even your tank sees is that I have 100k HP, I get hit for 25k, it just looks like I somehow reduced the damage. That's what priests and paladins are there to do. They're there to reduce the amount of damage that the raid appears to take by increasing their effective health above all other things. They actually have abilities that do reduce the amount of damage that people take, like pain suppression, sacrifice, and barrier, but at the end of the day, they do this primarily through increasing people's effective health for moments in time where damage is expected. These guys work incredibly well, again, where damage is expected and they have enough time to plan for it to place bubbles on the right people so that those absorbs are eaten through in a timely fashion and then everybody else can heal up what's left. So like, again, we'll take this back to our analogy. If I'm on the inside of the city and I see this giant wave coming, I'm expecting to get hit with the full force force of this giant wave but it's not going to happen because the barriers are going to take care of it there's going to be damage sure but it's going to be a lot less than getting hit by this giant tidal wave and that's because of the barriers so it reduces the amount of damage that the raid appears to take so that other healers can respond to it by using spells that are a lot cheaper or tanks can even deal with it themselves depending on what tank you are and what kind of healing you have right so that's absorbs out of the way right next we move into Okay, so the barriers have been knocked down, the levees broke, whatever example you want to use. Water is seeping into the city. Who do you rely on at that point in time? Your first responders, right? Those are your raid healers. Those are your monks, your druids, and your holy priests. These guys are responsible for blanketing the raid in hots, okay? Even though Resto Shaman do have hots, it's riptide, it has a cooldown, whatever. They're responsible for blanketing your raid in hots, so as soon as they take damage, that pushes past that absorb that was placed on them, they're immediately going to start being able to be healed by that hot without having to sit there and target the player, 
which is incredibly beneficial, right? Not only that, these players typically are very mobile, so they can be where they need to be, and they don't lose a lot of healing in moments in between big burst phases and transitions and things like that, where other healers might suffer. They're the guys that are going to be there to patch up the wounds on the go. They're going to try to deal with the damage as best they possibly can. So, for instance, right, like, I'm a holy priest, right? That's my main now, right? I love to, you know, use Circle of Healing. It's not necessarily a spell that's going to save someone's life. If we compare it to a spell like Lay on Hands, right, it might heal for a little bit, like, more than Lay on Hands could, but it's going to be splitting that amongst six targets, right? Obviously... In your mind, six targets is better than one, but if you're splitting the, that amount of healing or roughly the same amount of healing, then some might say it's better on one target. It really just depends. So my circle of healing is not going to save anyone's life, but it'll keep the raid's health pool as close to steady as it possibly can be. I'm going to try to get him not to be in the video. Um, but yeah, you want to keep your job is to keep the raid's health as close to steady as it can be by using things like heal over times for druids. Uh, wild growth is very similar to circle of healing, and uplift is very similar to um, a circle and wild growth in that regard. They're not going to save anyone's life necessarily, but they're going to make sure that the raid stays stable for as long as possible. That's kind of what your uh, your raid healers are there for. And obviously this class, or this particular type of healer, benefits more from constant sustained damage. Not too high, not bursty, but constant sustained damage to the point where it's going to be more than absorbs can handle or you're not going to be able to put absorbs on everyone that's going to be affected, right? And then these guys can come in and heal it up very efficiently. And at first glance, you might assume that there is a discrepancy between your absorbers and your hot classes because in order for me to place a hot on someone if they're at full health full health or have an absorb placed on them and i place a hot on them i can't heal an absorb i can't heal someone that's a full health that's essentially nothing but overhealing so you might assume that having an absorb placed on a target is actually in some way hampering the throughput of a raid healer and it does it does but it's still better than not having that absorber or not having that raid healer. In either scenario, you're going to be at a loss. And in general, it allows the hots to be more effective on targets once their actual bubble is broken through and they've taken less damage or appear to, so their hot is, appears to be more effective. But it's really just that they've taken less damage, right? So they work better together than they seem to but again when you look at it based on a healing meter the presence of a discipline priest or a strong paladin in a raid where damage comes in predictable bursts and not always sustained actually appears to hamper the effectiveness of other healers when in actuality it just lets their heals do more to the actual health of a target which is awesome right and then finally we're going to talk about our last line of defense against this tidal wave of damage. We've talked about the barriers. We've talked about the first responders. But your first responders can't save everyone. There are people who are trapped on their roofs. You need helicopters. Who do you call at that point in time? You call the National Guard, right? That's your resto shamis. They are the backbone. They are the big savior healers of the current expansion. And the reason being is because they have uh, so many things going for them. They have incredibly strong sustained AoE. No other class can do it like they can. They don't have to build up to it necessarily. They can really just spam chain heal as much as they want. They'll still benefit from their mastery. It's an incredibly efficient heal because it's a smart heal and it doesn't have a cooldown, right? Whereas Uplift has a ton of conditions that have to be met for it. Uh, Circle of Healing and Wild Growth both have cooldowns and massive mana costs. Chain heal is kind of costly, but at the same time, it's able to be spammed to heal people up and in stacked groups, it's even better, right? Also, they have a ton of burst healing cooldowns. They have Ascendance. I think it's Ancestral Guidance. It's been a while since I played a Shaman, so I might got that one wrong. They have Primal Elementalist to buff their heals. They have, you know, Unleash Life can even buff their heals. They have a ton 
a metric ton, oh, and healing tide, that was the other one, and double link if they take an echo of elements. They have a ton of healing cooldowns to save the raid from dying. And, most importantly, they have a mastery that lets them do all of it even better. They have the deep healing mastery, which means, pretty much, that they, the lower the health of the target of their heals, the more their heals will heal for, depending on the percentage because of their mastery. And since a lot of their heals, their healing stream totem, their uh, chain heal, uh, those are the big ones, obviously, are smart heals, they automatically seek out the lowest health target within a certain radius, so they also benefit from their mastery. Both passively and a better shaman will be better at targeting players with lower health. So you can see that they're the guys that bring up the rear. When the hots and the spread healing isn't enough, these are the guys that are really going to save the raid's life. Literally, quite literally with Spirit Link Totem, it's almost impossible to die when Spirit Link Totem is dropped. It's really impossible to die through Ascendance and other things like combined together too because of the spread healing potential that goes out there but in a much burstier fashion. So that's where your Shaman come from. But obviously these guys depend on people to take damage in order for their heals to be relevant. So if there's just not a lot of damage going out and these other two classes, these other two uh, forces to be reckoned with against this tidal wave are doing their jobs, you don't have to call on the National Guard. And they're not going to look like they're doing anything because they're not, right? But it's obviously a good thing to have the goddamn National Guard rather than not have them, right? So you still bring Shaman to the raid. And when things get really crazy, yeah, Shaman are the ones that are going to be there whether the damage is predictable or not to heal it up very, very easily. They also tend to have heavier cast time spells and have to plan their movement around Spirit Walker's Grace. So they're a bit slower and they get sniped by uh, Absorbs and Hots a little bit more. But in general, those are the guys who are going to pull you through the real shit. And you need them there. You need all of your healing classes there. You need to have an Absorb. You need to have a Raid or a Spread Healer. You need to have somebody that's going to bring up a good backbone. There's also a good idea to have a tank healer, which you can pretty much consider your absorbs to be very good at that. Paladins are excellent at it, but discipline priests aren't far off. And you need to have all these types of healers in order to create a successful run, right? You need to. Uh, so before you take a look at healing meters and decide that a healing class sucks, ask yourself a couple more questions and ask the person who might be saying it, a couple more questions about the scenario, the situation that you're in. What other healers are present in the raid? Do we even have a balanced group to begin with? What kind of movement's in this fight? When, what are the damage intervals? What's the real issue in this fight? Like, take something like Fell Lord. Fell Lord doesn't actually do much of anything, right? He doesn't. The damage that Fell Lord does is very, very negligible. And if you do the mechanics right, they are not that damaging either, and even then they come in at very predictable intervals. It's when people start making mistakes that you can't account for that the whole raid can be at nearly zero health, and there's also like the disarm phase. But overall, there's not a ton of damage that goes out, and if you do the fire right, there's not a lot of damage that goes out. So it's stuff like that that you have to understand about your fight, and even down to the actual length of the fight, and when the damage comes in can actually mean that some healers will be much better than others. So like if I can take like a talent like Primal Elementalist, right? And I can use it two or three times in a fight. Yay. That's awesome. And I might be having more burst potential if that's not going to overheal. If I am a Discipline Priest and I can tie my Archangel very well while not having to hold on to it for too long, then that's excellent too. So stuff like that also greatly affects healers. There's so much to the healing metagame, which is why I'm really glad that I switched from tank to healer. I've never been happier. I've never been more interested in the game and other classes and my own class. Uh, so I encourage you, if you haven't tried healing, please give it a shot. Don't be like this group. That's actually one of the reasons why this group is failing right now, is there are five, <laughs> five priests, and three of them are holy priests. I don't actually know what the other one was doing. Uh, and like, you see my HPS is like way up there. And then the second person is the discipline priest, which kind of is in line with what we're talking about when there's so much damage going on in Archimonde, especially in LFR, that's unpredictable. A discipline priest doesn't know who to bubble. So their heals are obviously very much up there because they're spam healing the tanks and spam bubbling the tanks. 
whereas I'm pretty much healing everybody else in the raid. And I don't know what everyone else is doing because their heals are below the tanks, but it's because of the fact that this group is not balanced. We don't have a shaman to drop spirit link totem when everyone's health is low. We don't have them to pop ascendance and heal everyone up. So stuff like that that you want to keep in mind when you're building a group and you're pugging. Try that. Try to set your group up for as much success as you can before you even start. So for instance, if you're a holy priest and you've ever queued for a pug and then they whisper you back and they ask what spec you are, they're not asking you, they shouldn't be asking you this because they're trying to figure out if you're holy or disc because disc is always better than holy. They're obviously more than likely asking you because they probably already have a discipline priest in the raid and they can't risk you guys overlapping. So just kind of think about that when you're the one building your group next, when you're the one picking guildies for your raid, when you're the one doing open raid signups, constructing a healing team that is a cohesive unit just based on their class alone is a huge step in the right direction for you. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this discussion. I hope it made sense. I'm going to go ahead and cut the video off now because it doesn't get any better. And I unfortunately just left after this. I just wanted something to play in the background so you guys weren't staring at me talking the whole time. Uh, I really do appreciate all the support. I think that by the end of the day today, my Blood Death Knight guy will be over a thousand views. So it'll join my resto guide in that regard. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, please check out my other healing guides. I have a resto guide, I have a holy guide, and a disc guide. And those are the classes I play right now. So please go check those out. There's going to be more healing videos to come. Thank you very much for watching.